This week on Jared's Got Outdoors. So as you can see, I've got my daughter Aubrey here. She's uh, one of the lucky, uh, lucky hunters that drew an antelope tag and uh, using a rifle, of course, this year. So um, anyways, it's the first day of the hunt for us. The, week, the hunt's been going on for about a week now. So, um, you know, just between all the hunts going on, this is when we've come out to, to see if we can't get Aubrey an antelope, uh, her first one. So what yes. do you think? I'm uh, excited. What are you going for? Um, 14 or better. 14 inches or better. So pretty good antelope um, here, here for Idaho. Anyhow, that's the goal, 14 inch antelope. And uh, we're gonna start out and just hike up this mountain. We haven't spotted any. It's a mountain that can hold some. Um, a lot of times you drive around and you look and stuff like that, but this particular place, you just can't see them until you're on them. So we're gonna take off hiking and, and uh, see if we can't find something. So let's get after it. As you can see, we started up a really steep dirt road. I guess we could have driven up it, but then we'd probably risk spooking any antelope if there were any up there. Nathan was along for the hunt as well. He harvested his elk early in the season this year and was feeling some hunting withdrawals. When he asked to tag along, that was fine with me. That's only one more person to help pack one out. And then there was Aubrey, proving that hunting isn't just for boys. I'll tell you what, the first part of this hike was a doozy and took the wind right out of us. Of course, the abnormally hot day didn't help either. Even though tomorrow is the first of October, you, won't, you would think it's still summer, it's blasting hot. Once we hit the top of this first ridge, we didn't spot anything. Our main goal was to reach the top of the mountain you see in front of us. It would be a great glassing point to spot from. I've seen antelope on this mountain before and I fully expected to find a herd up here again. We slowly worked around the finger ridges looking down below hoping to find the herd. But one after another, each draw was winding up empty. I'll tell you what, it is really hot. You'd think it was August right now. Get, just get out, sun, sun burned out here and it's supposed to drop 20 degrees tomorrow. Rain and maybe snow and stuff, but anyway, so far nothing. We'll keep swinging around and keep checking draws and see if we can't find some goats we have. There was still a bit of country to look over, so we just kept plugging along. Continuing around the mountain, we even crossed a few rocky ledges to keep us up at a good viewing elevation. But each draw came up empty. They must be on an adjoining mountain somewhere. We'll just kind of have to sit down and pull out the old spotting scope and see if we can find them. But so far, a couple miles we put on and nothing to show for it. Well, we finally found some. And as we suspected there on the next mountain over, um, I don't know, a mile or two as the crow flies, a long ways off. We can just barely see them up. Kind of a couple of them skylined up on a ridge, a few of them bedded down. There's half a dozen. Hopefully there's two or three or four times more than that. Um, too far to see as far as quality of any buck or anything like that. So we'll just have to hike over there and I'll have to drop off this, hike back up the, uh, that one and, and see what we got over there. So at least we've got some, some uh, pronghorn in our sights. Now we can see if we can make something happen. With daylight burning, we made tracks in their direction. Turned out the pronghorn were two and a half miles away from where we spotted them. So we had a ways to go before we lost shooting light. Well, it was a lot further than we thought. We now think we're about 400 yards. We'll just go right up to the top of the peak and see. We finished the hike up to the rock ledge we would use to hide behind and peeked over. It took a minute to find them as they were further away than we hoped, and most were bedded down on the sage. They look like they're still six, seven hundred yards off. Six, I used the spotting scope to slowly pick the area apart and look for a buck that was sure to be there. When I spotted the buck bedded down, my first thought was that it looked like a possible shooter. We all crowded around the scope and checked the buck out so Aubrey could make a decision. The buck looked to be at least 13 inches tall and quite wide. Not a giant, but a solid buck. The biggest problem was that we had no way to sneak in closer for a shot until they either moved towards us or to a spot that allowed us to move in. It took about an hour of waiting in the cold wind, but eventually all the animals fed over the knob they were on and out of sight. With the pronghorn over the rise, we hurried on over to get close for a shot, if possible. After getting to a point we thought we would see them from, we prepped by getting the shooting sticks ready and crawled in for a peek. What we found is they'd already moved to another spot, so we hurried on over to another vantage point. This time we found them not much more than 100 yards off, perfect for an easy shot. We set up Aubrey using the rocks for a rest. 
One by one, the does materialized walking right out in front of us. This was a perfect situation. All we needed was the buck to follow into view. Waiting for what seemed like an eternity, but was probably only a few minutes, all 10 does that we knew were there walked out. And that meant that the buck must have been just over the rise in the hill, but coming our way. By now, the closest doe was just 60 yards away. At some point, they'd spot us, so hopefully the buck would hurry up. Waiting in frustration several more minutes, the buck still hadn't come into view. The closest doe, however, caught us when I had the camera down. It took her a while to decide to leave, but when she did, she took all the does and left in the direction they were heading. That meant that the buck should still be just over the rise in the hill and probably had no idea that all the does had left. With this knowledge and the fact that we were losing daylight fast, we hurried over to look for the buck. When we got there, we couldn't find anything, but way down the hill about a thousand yards off, I spotted a buck heading our way. All we could figure is it must have chased off a smaller buck we'd seen earlier. But it was okay because it was coming right back to us, assuming his does were still here. As shooting light was near ending, the buck finally made it all the way to us and didn't spot us till it was under 100 yards off. The only problem, by now we knew it wasn't the big buck after all, but the small buck we'd seen earlier. Just a young buck with maybe 11 inch horns if he was lucky. The big buck had pulled a Houdini trick on us and totally disappeared. With shooting light now over, all we could do was head off the mountain in frustration. Well, I think we were tricked. They knew better than we did. The next evening found us once again hiking after some pronghorn. We had spotted two groups that were in a hard to get to spot because of private property blocking access to the areas around it. Essentially, we had to hike about two miles to get to the goats just to get a better look. We had spotted two big herds of pronghorn, so we figured there ought to be at least one shooter in the mix. After hiking the two miles and finding the first herd we were looking for, the antelope spotted us. But they were in range for shooting, and so we quickly gave the buck a good look. It didn't take long, however, to realize that this buck was no bigger than the one she passed on the night before. Somehow it seems like it's always the ones that you don't plan on shooting that hang out in range for a while, and this was no exception. After watching it for a few minutes, we made our presence obvious so we could move on to the next group, and they ran off. We hiked two miles up and down to come and see how big this guy was, and he ended up only being 12 inches. So, oh well. Well, it was a couple weeks later before Aubrey and I could get back out to try to fill her tag. We figured we'd try some new country first, and if that failed, go back to where we'd been the first time. We did see a big herd of about 40 pronghorn, but only saw two small bucks in the bunch. Then another group of 60, with again, one small buck. We checked out a lot of other areas before finally deciding to head on back over to the area we'd been to a few weeks before. Sure enough, we glassed up a big herd of antelope with at least one possible shooter up on the hill we'd failed to find any on the first day we came out. With the shadows and poor sun position, it was tough to see them clearly. But knowing where they were, we should be able to drive around to another spot and hike in about a mile to get right in on them. So today we tried out some new places. Um, all we saw was doe and little bucks. So we came back to our first spot that we came hunting a couple weeks ago and we glassed down below and saw some. So we're going to hike up and see if we can't find them. Again, we found ourselves hiking up this really steep dirt road. However, in this situation, we knew we'd spook them if we drove up it. We decided to go clear to the top of the hill to get the best angle on the antelope, where it would obviously be a good shooting point. Hiking up through the rocks, we knew we were close enough to go ahead and load around into the gun. Taking off my pack, I snuck in to find the goats. To my surprise, there were none. It took a while, but I finally spotted them well over a mile away. We just couldn't seem to make things work. When I finally spot them, they're like a mile down the canyon, actually really close to the road, um, a long ways down. We're parked here over here, a mile that way, and they're a mile that way. So we still have the height advantage, so probably ought to go ahead and, and keep it and see if we can sneak down in there and get above them, but dang buggers. Even though they were a long ways off, we had most of the day still ahead of us, so we decided to go after them. Put us on a wild goose chase. We did find some deer antlers. 
While we were working around a point to get a better angle on them, a few other antelope caught our eye. We thought it was part of the herd, but after chasing them for a while, we realized that we were on another wild goose chase and that the herd we were looking for must have been still where we last saw them. Sure enough, we found them bedded up in some tall sage, and so we made a quick game plan on how to get in range for a shot. There was a small rocky point that looked like a perfect place to get in on them from. Sneaking around to this point, we peeked over it to see a herd right where we'd last seen them. First, we put up the spotting scope so we could get a real good look at the two bucks we had seen in the herd. The smaller of the two was in plain view, but as I said, it was kind of a borderline buck and not quite as big as she was hoping for. After a few minutes, however, I found the other buck, and it looked to be a shooter. The best thing was that it was also the closest one to us. We watched for quite a while as we talked about the two different bucks and got Aubrey all lined up on the distance for this shot. The first thing we needed, however, was for it to stand up to give Aubrey a bit bigger and clearer target. Suddenly the buck got up. We hurried and had Aubrey get set for the shot, but the buck just kept its back to us as it fed away from us. Aubrey was ready, it just needed to turn broadside. The buck just kept working towards the rest of the herd without turning broadside. And finally, after it went another 80 yards from where it had been bedded down, it turned and gave Aubrey the shot she was looking for. Right there. You're high, you're high. Put another one in. As you can see, she just shot a little high. While they initially ran our way, by the time they were unbunched and we had the buck isolated, they were running away from us and moving fast. So after I missed, we watched them run over this ridge and so we gathered our stuff and thought we were going to have to chase them all the way back up to the top. But they surprised us and they were just right over the ridge just a couple hundred yards. And they saw us and so they started moving and so my dad didn't even have time to get the camera out so I just got on a rock and shot. I didn't have time to judge the two bucks. I could just see both of them in my scope. So I just shot at the further one, the further one in behind, and it ended up being the smaller one of the books, but it's totally okay. At least I got my antelope. With the buck down, all we could do was make our way over to check out her first pronghorn. Well, here's Aubrey's antelope. You know, you didn't get to see the shot there in the end, it just happened so fast, but you saw everything leading up to it. And that really is the story to this antelope. Just you know, some antelope hunts are pretty easy and that's kind of why they're fun. This was not an easy hunt. The last time we came out, we really pounded the miles and, and worked hard. And then today, you know, it's almost the end of the day and we saw this antelope in the morning. So we've spent hours and hours trying to get in on it and find them. And anyways, as you saw, you know, we had that big buck that Aubrey missed there, came over the top, had two bucks in her scope. She uh, picked one, it was kind of had to make a quick decision and ended up getting the smaller of the two, but it's still a nice buck. And uh, you know, has one broken off point here, nice pretty curl here. So even though it's not the biggest buck on the mountain, we really made some, some fun memories that we're gonna, you know, remember for a long time just because of the hard work. So every time we see this, this antelope on the wall, you know, we'll probably European it. And uh, every time we see that, we'll remember the, the fun that we had and the hard work for sure. But way to go, Aubrey, congratulations. Thanks. First antelope and uh, anyways, just, one more incredible memory I've been able to make with my daughter.